Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Christopher Ward C65 Sandhurst. This watch is available from ChristopherWard.com in two versions. On the stainless steel bracelet it is available for €1,135. On the vintage Italian leather strap that you're looking at here it is available for €1,005 respectively. So firstly let's look at the box that the watch comes in and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the watch box is protected by this matte cardboard outer sleeve and as you can see on the top of the sleeve we have the Christopher Ward twin flag emblem embossed which is very aesthetically pleasing. This is the watch box itself. The right portion is a sleeve which is matte vinyl coated as you can see and it has the Christopher Ward twin flag emblem and also Christopher Ward embossed on the lid and the left hand portion is a solid wooden tray which one withdraws from the sleeve. So very nice attention to detail. This is innovative and I like the fact the sleeve is fully felt lined and that means there's no friction when one uh, pulls out and pushes back in the wooden tray and also there are two magnets hidden in the sleeve which attract two magnets in the end of the solid wooden tray. I like this kind of innovation and attention to detail and also it's a very aesthetically pleasing watch box which makes a credible alternative to cardboard or plastic watch boxes which are usually the default option for mid-tier pieces. In the lid of the watch box we get two booklets. The first booklet is the 6060 guarantee booklet as you can see. Now, the plastic uh, guarantee card details the terms and conditions of the 6060 guarantee. So what does that mean? Every Christopher Ward watch is covered by a 6060 guarantee. The watch itself is covered by a 60-day free return guarantee. So if you purchase the watch and for any reason you're unhappy with it during the first 60 days of purchase, you can return the watch to Christopher Ward either for full refund or alternatively a replacement watch. The other 60 refers to the movement. I'm pleased to report that the movement used in the piece is covered by a 60-month guarantee, which is very reassuring. So, good quality, thorough 6060 guarantee. And one also gets this Christopher Ward Owner's Handbook. Now, I want to give due credit. This is the best written and clearly concise owner's instruction manual I have ever read. Clear, concise diagrams which are easy to follow with instructions, even going down to the detail of operating the quick release spring bars in the bracelet and strap. And we even have diagrams detailing the operation of the two button push clasp used on the stainless steel bracelet and the ratcheting mechanism. It also goes into specific detail about the terms and conditions of the 6060 guarantee and all aspects of the operation of the watch, including the hand winding and hacking of the Salita SW200 one chronometer movement. Very well written, very uh, thorough read and also I think it's useful if you're unfamiliar with automatic movements such as the Salita SW200-1. Now inside the lid we have this cardboard section which one removes and the watch itself if it's on the bracelet it sits on this piece of metal which is vinyl coated to protect the bracelet for any scuffs and scratches in transit. If it's on the calf leather strap it is secured by these two elasticated straps. So very well thought through, very well crafted, nice attention to detail and I really like it. I think this is an aesthetically pleasing watch box which really does give the feeling of a quality product. So one also gets this plastic tag with 6060 on it and Christopher Ward embossed. And lastly, one also gets one of my favourite aspects of the watch, the COSC chronometer certificate. Now bearing in mind that this is only €1,005 on the leather strap, it really is unheard of to get a mid-tier piece with COSC chronometer certification. And not only that, they have also included the actual certificate from COSC themselves. So as you can see, the movement is fully tested in different positions and COSC tests the chronometer limits to be within minus four to plus six seconds per day. As you can see, they fully test the movement in all different positions. And then we have five positions of regulation with a printout of the actual accuracy readings in those five regulated positions. So very thorough, very good testing of the movement. And I'm pleased to report that as you can see, this chronometer grade movement from Salita is regulated to plus 3.09 seconds per day consistently. So plus 3.09 seconds is well within the cost chronometer limits of minus four to plus six. So very impressive and very reassuring to get the actual cost certificate with the piece. 
Now, with regards to the specification of this C65, first I want to explain the background to this piece. The C65 Sandhurst is a tribute to a military-issued piece from 1969, which was the Smith's W10. So the British Ministry of Defence issued the Smith's W10 to British Army soldiers in 1969, and the W10 had this classic field watch dial layout. Now, Christopher Ward deserves due credit for replicating that to a very high standard. This follows the exact dial layout of the Smith's W10 from 1969, and on the reverse, it also has the British Army crest. And as you can see, it says British Army W10 embossed with also the Army crest. So just to clarify, Christopher Ward have gained licensing from the British Army to use their crest on their watches and also the British Army W10 embossing. Beautifully executed, screw down case back, and it really is a faithful heritage reissue, in effect, of the Smith's W10 dial layout. With regards to the specification of the C65, it has a 38mm case diameter, a 45.3mm lug-to-lug -lug measurement, and an 11.6mm thickness, including the domed box crystal. So, sapphire crystal, AR coating on the underside, and I absolutely love the aesthetic of that domed box crystal. It really does give it a vintage aesthetic of plexiglass, or alternatively acrylic, which was popular in the 1960s. So, the advantage of sapphire crystal over plexiglass or acrylic or hesalite is that it is more scratch resistant, and also it has AR coating on the underside, which improves the legibility of that classic W10 dial layout, with the large Arabic numerals and also chaptering indexing. So with regards to the rest of the specification, 20mm lug width, which is very versatile for strap changes. With regards to the heft, on the leather strap, it only weighs 70 grams, incredibly lightweight piece which lacks heft. On the solid stainless steel bracelet, it weighs 150 grams, so significant difference. I would say to you, if you're a collector with a smaller wrist of 6 to 7 inches, I would advise you to opt for this vintage Italian leather strap. At only 70 grams, it really does feel weightless on the wrist. If you're a collector with a larger wrist of 7 to 8 inches, respectively, I would advise you to opt for the solid stainless steel bracelet. Now, as you may know from my previous review of the C65 Dartmouth, which uses the same solid stainless steel bracelet, I'm pleased to report it is absolutely 10 out of 10 quality. I like the two button push clasp used on the bracelet and also the ratcheting mechanism, which I actually consider to be better than the Rolex Glide Lock system. As you can see, the buckle and tang is signed with Christopher Ward. Incredible attention to detail, flawless brass satin finish, nice heavy gauge of metal. Two keepers on the leather strap, as you can see, one's fixed, one slides, flawless stitching, and I think it's just a very well-made, well-crafted Italian leather strap. Brass satin finish to the bezel, which contrasts beautifully with the mirror polishing to the underside of the flanks of the case, which also have a brass satin finish to the top side of the flanks. And with regards to the case polishing, this is the kind of mirror polishing and also brass satin finishing um, that one would expect to see on a high tier piece costing in excess of 5,000 euro. Certainly one doesn't see this on a mid tier piece costing only 1,005 euro. I think Christopher Ward deserves full credit for producing an excellent quality piece with good quality control, outstanding case polishing and the build quality is just exceptional. I love the mirror polish bevels to the flanks of the case which mark the transition between the tops of the lugs and the flanks. Just beautifully done. Another thing I really like about it is the crown. Now, I previously reviewed the C65 Dartmouth and my main criticism, the main negative of that watch is that it used a push-pull crown. I'm pleased to report that Christopher Ward has responded to criticism and feedback from collectors also criticising the use of a push-pull crown on a C65 Dartmouth which is meant to be a dive piece. So really, a dive piece should have a screw down crown. And Christopher Ward have now updated the crown and they've upgraded it from a push pull crown to a screw down crown. And I'm pleased to report that this C65 Sandhurst, although it's a field watch rather than being a dive piece, uses the same screw down crown as the C65 Dartmouth, which is a dive piece. Silky smooth action on the thread. It's an absolute pleasure to use. I would describe the thread action as Rolex quality. 
the pickup of the thread, the internal thread on the solid stainless steel crown and the external thread on the crown tube is flawless. Very good meshing of the threads. It's an absolute pleasure to push in the crown and screw it back down. It's just silky smooth. One of the best crown actions I've experienced on a watch. So it's very good that they've upgraded from a push-pull crown to a screw-down crown. As you can see, it is embossed and signed with the uh, twin flag emblem in silver, which contrasts beautifully with a bead-blasted effect background. And I really like the attention to detail. You can see there's a red anodized ring inside the, inside the signed solid stainless steel crown, which has a coin-edge finish. One of the most aesthetically pleasing and also best finished crowns I have seen. And again, it's the kind of screw down crown one would expect to see on a high tier piece in excess of 5,000 euro. To get this kind of attention to detail, quality control and finishing at only 1,005 euro, it's just outstanding. Now, another, uh, another aspect which I really like is the use of a solid stainless steel screw down case back, which provides an effective hermetic seal to 150 meters of water resistance, as does the screw down crown. Mirror polished circumference to the uh, screw down case back, and as you can see, the center section has a bead blasted matte effect with the embossed British Army crest and also the embossed British Army W10, as I've discussed. The quality of this case back is 10 out of 10. One of the best finished case backs I've ever seen on a watch, regardless of the price point. So let's talk about this Italian leather strap. So vintage um, feel to it. Nice thick strap, 20 millimeters, has quick release stainless steel spring bars. I like the contrasting black edge to it. It really does contrast beautifully with the uh, vintage uh, Italian leather. It's not suede, it's got a nubuck feel to it, but it's got a matte finish rather than being glossy. And it's thick, so I think it's going to be durable, although it is going to require some breaking in to be comfortable. Plenty of holes in the strap to allow for lots of adjustment, and I think they deserve full credit for producing a high quality leather strap. And as you can see, it says Italian vintage oak leather, and the stitching on it is absolutely flawless throughout and very high quality heavy gauge of solid stainless steel signed buckle and tang. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my eight inch wrist. So really, if you've got a six to seven inch wrist, I think the strap is going to be the correct option. And as you can see, it even fits up to my eight inch wrist. It's just long enough to engage in the first keeper. So if you're a collector with a six to seven and a half inch wrist, this is going to fit you with no problems whatsoever. However, if you have an eight inch wrist like myself, you are going to need a slightly longer strap. Um, but however, for the majority of collectors, it's going to be no problem at all. So the 45.3 uh, lug to lug measurement, as you can see, gives a very snug fit, uh, which wraps around the wrist due to the curved profile of the lugs. And also I like the fact it's very low profile for an automatic piece with a box crystal, only 11.6 millimeters thick. This is the kind of thickness one would expect to see on a manual wind piece or a quartz rather than an automatic piece with a rotor. So low profile piece, which is easily going to slip underneath a shirt cuff if worn as a daily wear piece. And I actually think that you could even wear this on a NATO strap and it would still be low profile enough to slip underneath a shirt cuff. I think this would be very uh, good looking on a grey NATO strap, which really would enhance the military aesthetic of the piece because it has that classic W10 dial layout. So it's only 70 grams on the leather strap. It feels absolutely weightless on the wrist. Very comfortable piece to wear for long periods of time, such as eight to 12 hours per day on this um, Italian vintage leather strap. Now, with regards to the movement used, it uses the Salita SW200-1, which is Swiss made. It has 26 jewels and the rotor is finished with Christopher Ward's Collie McCone decoration. Hand winding and hacking, which are useful complications. 40 hour power reserve. It runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of four hertz. Now you'll know from my previous reviews, I like four hertz movements because the, it gives the second hand a characteristic smooth sweep. With Seiko movements that run at three hertz, they have a, a judder or a stuttering to the second hand, but if you look at the red tip second hand, you can see it is sweeping smoothly around the dial due to that four hertz frequency. As discussed, this is chronometer grade. The SW200-1 comes in four grades, standard, elabor grade, top grade and chronometer grade. So top grade and chronometer grade really are the very best, regulated in five positions. And as you can see, this one is regulated to within cost limits of minus four to plus six seconds per day. 
What I like about the W10 dial layout is it simply has the triangle at 12 o'clock and Christopher Ward, and then we just have automatic and chronometer at the 6 o'clock position. It's not over branded with text or unnecessary specification, the dial isn't too busy and cluttered. It simply has the large, clearly legible Arabic numerals of a field watch and the chaptering around the circumference of the dial with Swiss made at 6 o'clock. So what we're looking at here is a high quality Swiss made watch with a chronometer grade Salita SW200-1 Swiss made movement. It really is incredible value at only €1,005 on the uh, leather strap. So let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to its absolute maximum. So as usual I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to its absolute peak. So the loom used on this piece is Old Radium Tone Super Luminova. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see it has not disappointed. Outstanding performance. This is the best quality Super Luminova I have seen on a field watch. It's got a lovely green tone to the Old Radium Super Luminova which reminds me of C3 Super Luminova. On the baton style hands you can see that it's glowing brightly and continuing to glow for a good length of time. It's also glowing brightly and continuing to glow for a good length of time on the large Arabic numerals on the dial and also the, apply, the painted indices. Outstanding, 10 out of 10 quality. This really is equal in quality to the very best of Rolex Chrome Light or alternatively Swiss BGW9, or alternatively Seiko Luma Brights, which are the best uh, loom used in the watch industry. I think Christopher will deserve full credit for not cutting any corners with regards to the quality of the uh, Super Luminova used on this piece. It's just incredible. So very pleased with that. Um, now, lastly, I'll summarize the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So the price point of this watch is €1,005 on the leather strap or alternatively €1,135 on the stainless steel bracelet. It is unquestionably excellent quality and unquestionably excellent value at those two respective price points. As discussed, I previously reviewed the C65 Dartmouth, so I can confirm that the stainless steel bracelet used on the C65 series is flawless. It really is an incredibly well-made bracelet. This calf leather strap doesn't disappoint either. So really, it isn't something that's going to disappoint. It is a high quality leather strap. The quality control, the case finishing, the builds quality, the materials, and also the specification is absolutely loaded. We've got a box sapphire crystal with AR coating, Super Luminova used on the dial and hands, chronometer grade Swiss made Salita SW200-1, and they've even upgraded the push-pull crown to a screw-down crown, which was the main negative of the C65 series. What are the negatives? There are none. This watch is flawless. If you are looking for a field watch that is Swiss made with a chronometer grade Swiss movement, this is it. This is the perfect field watch. So I'm going to highly recommend this watch to you for your consideration. I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the C65 Sandhurst. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.